Hello lovely friends, how are you all doing today? I hope you're well, I'm okay, still got a bit of a sore throat carrying on from when you saw me doing the tomatoes the other day and today we're at the end of the Easter bank holiday weekend when, <clears throat> oh it really is naughty, when I guess most folk uh, are either <laughs> chilling out, eating chocolate, we're doing a little tiny bit of visiting in each other's gardens now as lockdown is lifting, but I'm guessing that most folk have made the most of this weekend to get into their gardens because traditionally Easter weekend is the first big garden weekend each year, isn't it? So as you will have seen, Oh, I'm pooped, I'll be honest. Uh, I got my peppers done, potted on, tomatoes and celery sown, yay. What I didn't show you was me getting my geranium cuttings done. So I've done a load of geranium cuttings to bring on for a bit of decoration on the deck area in the garden this summer. Hopefully I've not left it too late. Uh, they should be fine, they should be fine. But yeah, it's been a really bonkers busy time. So I thought, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna sit for a moment and have a catch up with you all. I don't know if you can tell today through the screen, the light. We've had such, it's not, it's been cold. It's been quite chilly the last few days and we've had frosts at night. But we're getting brightness, we're getting sunshine again and when I reflect, when I get to the end of the day, whether I mean to or not, I always do reflect. And it amazes me, it never ceases to amaze me what a difference it makes to my day, what a difference it makes to the way I feel to have light and to have bright light. Every year I talk about, um, I talk about how much I struggle in the winter and people say you should get a SAD light as an SAD for Seasonal Affective Disorder light and I always think yeah maybe I will and then before I know it the winter's over, we're into the garden, we're into spring, we're busy 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 and I've forgotten it already but I think I will look into that for this the next winter we have because honestly the difference the light makes to me is profound. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to sound like some kind of hippie born at the wrong time or maybe there is a bit of pagan in me. I'm sure so many of you get it too, but this having light each day, oh, it fixes so many problems, doesn't it? Um, oh, I almost went weepy for a second then. Of course, a week and a bit ago, our clocks changed. <clears throat> You're going to have to just forgive me being a bit, <clears throat> but this sore throat. And I'm sure it was because when I went to Archie Teapot's funeral, the train was packed and no one was wearing a mask. But I think also, I don't think it's COVID throat. What I mean is, I think it's just uh, after a year of very little exposure to other pathogens uh my body's got lazy so now it's kicking in because it's had a pathogen exposure anyway um what was i saying i don't know it doesn't matter there i've definitely been playing catch up for the last few days so i talked a little bit last week or i'm losing track of time the day after the funeral, I'd stayed in bed till like half one, <laughs> and I'm gradually dragging myself back into my normal routine and finding that normal again, which is great. But honestly, this daylight, this bright light, it's like the best medicine ever. I, I do feel now like I can. I can get on with being me again. 
I'm still tired, I'm still really tired. I think that's gonna take a while to go. So physically I'm tired, but mentally I'm starting to be, woo, again, woo, I'm starting to be Vivi again. I've got a ton of props around me. I wanna catch up on a few things. So, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I was griping about the organic crapalogue. The thing was, uh, they're using a courier company, coming on to it because it's the same courier company, that are basically rubbish. Now, in a way, my ire should have been focused on the courier company rather than the organic gardening crapalogue. The reason my eye was focused on them was because when I rang to say there was a problem, they shouted at me down the phone and they were horrible to me. And it's like, hang on a minute, I'm a customer ringing you to say there's an issue to be shouted at? Ugh. So this company, this is a courier company called Yodel, I'm now having another issue with. <laughs> Do you remember when I was, you might not have seen the video, but when I was doing my what to sew in April video, one of the things I was trying to say before my buzzer went and I stopped filming, went downstairs, it was a courier who'd come to collect a parcel of books that I'm sending to someone else. They came, they collected it, off it's gone. Came back up the stairs, <laughs> carried on with the video, puffed. Um, and I said one of the reasons I was doing my what to sew from home rather than the shed was because I'm expecting various deliveries, so I need to be at home. And I have been at home. Apart from going to Auntie Tupac's funeral on the Tuesday, I was at home all week. So I hadn't checked my emails for a couple of days, and I think it was, I can't remember if it was Thursday night or Friday, Good Friday, that I checked. And I had an email to say, your parcel is a waiting collection. It's like, collection? I'm not paying to collect it, I'm paying to have it delivered. So I went onto the tracking site, this is Yodel, Yodel Liars. Went onto the tracking site and it gave three different days and three different times when they said they attempted to deliver but you were not at home. You know what? Okay, on the funeral day, I wasn't at home. But on the subsequent two days and the times they said, I was at home. I haven't left here. I've popped out a couple of times really quickly, sort of 8.30, 9 in the morning, to go and get a couple of bits and pieces. But generally, I have been at home. So when they say, Wednesday, we attempted to deliver at 3.30, you're a liar, you didn't. Thursday, we attempted to deliver at 11.30 in the morning or whatever. You're a liar, you didn't. No card left, nothing. So I thought, oh, we're back into this. This, <laughs> my channel is turning into oh, That's Life. For anyone who's British and remembers it, That's Life in the 70s and 80s was a consumer complaints program. Anyway, so I looked at the tracking and I was like, you definitely did not try to deliver, you've not rung my doorbell, I'm here. So for instance, in that video when I was talking about what to sew, I'm pointing that way because I was in the kitchen, even though I was in the kitchen with the door closed, filming, talking to you, I can still hear the buzzer. So I got in touch with the company, uh, I could only do it by email. There's not a phone number. Anyway, I emailed them to say, basically, I think your couriers are liars. <laughs> I haven't had it. And no, I can't get to it. It's the same warehouse. It's miles away from me. Uh, I can't get there. They've lied about trying to deliver it. No, they haven't. Uh, can you send a replacement, please? The thing is, as well, um, it's not like I live in a really obscure part of the world. It's not like I live 
off a main road, down a side track, up a windy lane, obscure. I live on the main road. <laughs> and all the other companies I get things from, so Amazon, uh, you know, DPD, DHL, UPS, My Hermes, the post office, Parcel Force, all these other people get my parcels to me. Anyway, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I'm talking about customer services. So I messaged the company to say, to explain that, yes, I had been there. I think your couriers are lying. Can you send a replacement? And I got within 12 hours or so, I got a reply from them saying, so sorry this has happened. We will organise a replacement for you. That's all any of us want as a consumer, isn't it? Is that when something goes wrong, the company, even though it's not the company's fault, it's the couriers, they do the right thing and offer to sort it out. They can then have the argument with the couriers later on. <clears throat> so this is still, I'm still waiting for my Ryobi battery. <laughs> my... Um, you know, it's the battery that will do all my little different gadgets. But then, um, I've lost track of days now. Was it Saturday? It may be. So I had that from them and I thought, well, okay, I'm still in limbo. I still haven't got my product, but at least the company are talking to me. That's one good thing. And they're not shouting at me. Yes, I think it must have been this Saturday. So... I was really busy all day. Honestly, I've been so manically busy the last few days trying to catch up with my own staff, my admin, you know, boring things like doing, doing my accounts from February, a month late, but things like doing my backups on the computer. I'm so glad I did. Um, I, I'm not that regular with them but I'm trying to be I'm trying to do it once a month I haven't done it since January there's a lot of stuff I don't want to lose photographs all that kind of stuff and I'd done a load of photographs of books to put into the shop I didn't want to lose those so yes back up back up back up so I'd done all that and then I'd got onto the computer and I'd started to upload all the new stock for the shop, which is all books at the moment. There will be other stuff, I promise. Oh, there's some lovely books at the moment. Thank you for the first order. I've had that. Um, so I was doing all that. Da, 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 and then it got to about four o'clock and I thought, right, let's put out the video. What to sew in April, put that video out. And then about two minutes later, suddenly... <sighs> ticking the whole house went silent the radio went off the computer went off it didn't have any lights on because it was four o'clock in the afternoon but every it was like everything had just flatlined for a second I had another power cut it's weird because the two flats below me it never seems to affect them just me so I lost my power and when I lose my power, that means obviously things like my router for the internet, that goes off too. So I couldn't even, I think I'd still got about maybe 12 books to upload into the shop. I couldn't do that. I couldn't respond to anyone's comments on my uh, video. I thought, do you know what, I'm just going to go and have a nice long hot bath. <laughs> I was achy, can't have a bath because even though my water, my boiler is all gas, it has a bit of an electrical component. It's like its brain is electric. Its body, all its muscles are gas, but the brain is electric. So that was out. <sighs> what to do? So I made a load of paper pots, <laughs> which you'll have seen in the last video. And then I thought, do you know what? Thank goodness, thank goodness it's happened after the clocks have changed. There's still good enough light. I'm going to read a book. I'll tell you about that in a second. First of all, 
um, my first port of call was I got on the phone because I have a landline because my mobile phone is, is pretty rubbish and it was running out of juice and of course I can't juice it up because the lecky's off. So I rang my, my um, power supplier and they said, oh, you need to ring such and such a number. It's a central thing. It's not nothing to do with us. It's to do with the grid. So I rang them up and we were five minutes into a conversation. I got cut off and I thought, oh, no, even my landline doesn't work anymore. So I left it five minutes, called them back. And they said, yes, there's an issue in your area. It's not affecting everybody. It's they called it a phase. There's a phase that it was affecting. They said, yeah, we're just getting the engineers out now. So this happened about, I guess, about four o'clock in the afternoon. It was literally seconds after I'd published my video, which was four o'clock. Uh, so they said the power is probably going to be out till about eight or nine o'clock tonight. We will keep you posted. And then they said, are there any vulnerable people in the household? Are there any people in the household who will be adversely affected by this, who need help? So I'm guessing, you know, things like medical equipment, if you're relying on medical equipment at home, if your battery isn't charged and suddenly the power goes out, it's an issue. So they asked and I said, no, I'm fine. So I thought, well, pff, what am I going to do? So I made me paper parts, I sat on the sofa, read, read my book for a bit. And then, oh, it was just before seven, about quarter to seven, I got another phone call to say, hello, Miss Gregory, just um, keeping you in the loop and letting you know that the engineers are on site and they are looking into the problem and we're hoping to have your power back on in an hour. So I said, thank you so much for calling and keeping me up to date. That's great, thank you. Put the phone down, went back to the sofa, carried on reading. And what I'd done when the power went out was, even though it was the daytime, I turned my overhead lights on so that when the power came back on, I'd know it by the lights coming on. So the lights flickered and I was like, yay! And then they went off. I was like, oh no carried on reading five minutes later they came on I said oh brilliant and this time they stayed on for a little while I could hear my boiler kicking in the brain started kicking in I could hear the freezers and the fridge going and then it went off again <laughs> anyway after about five little flickers on off on off it came on great what I didn't expect and this is why I'm talking about customer services, is I think it came back on at about seven, like properly on. So it'd been three, it'd been three hours it had been off. About half past seven, I got a call. Answered the phone, hello. <laughs> and they said, oh, hello, Miss Gregory. It's the whoever they are. I can't remember their name. I'm so sorry, I should. But it's like the electricity, network, powery thing. They said, um, just wanting to check in with you that everybody in your household is okay and that you haven't been adversely affected by the power outage. Are you okay? I could have cried. <laughs> Actually, it did make me really weepy. It's ridiculous. Obviously, I'm a bit weepy at the moment. Anyway, little, the littlest things trigger me. But I thought, what a difference what a difference that makes i didn't chase them up for a phone call i didn't nag them for that they've just called me to say are you okay you know what yeah i am thank you so much it, you know i think in general i don't i don't think it takes much to make human beings happy but I think it also, it doesn't take much to make us upset or angry or frustrated. So with all these companies, you know, if it doesn't take much to be happy or frustrated or whatever, go this way. Just, just do that one little thing that's going to make your customer happy. And we'll love you forever. <laughs> so... Yes, thank goodness. Um, 
thank goodness that all panned out okay. So, I'm going to tell you quickly about the book I started reading. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's not a writer I've read before. He does have quite a bit of other work out there, but this is my first one I've read of him. It's by Paul Watkins, and it's called... Get the, get the, shine, uh, the shiny bit off. The Fellowship of Ghosts. Now, look at that cover, that title. It intrigued me. I've had this for ages. I picked it up in a charity shop and I was looking the other day. I must have liked the idea of it because, can you see? £5.60. £5.60 is quite a lot, but it's hardback. It's beautifully bound as well. I'm really into my book bindings. So, it's what we call three-quarter cloth. Uh, sorry, three-quarter paper. So, it's got paper, boards, and then cloth spine with gilt stamping gorgeous so this briefly is about this chap's travels in Norway and I was thinking about how to talk about it. it's the subtitle is a journey through the mountains of Norway and I was thinking about how do I talk about this today how can I I'm really struggling to do a nutshell of it one of the reasons I was attracted to it was because it's a mountain, mountaineering book. And you've all seen all this, all this is mountaineering and exploration in cold places. But also because it's Norway and I really don't know much about Norway apart from my O-level geography lessons of um, fjords, glaciers, Bergen, Trondheim. Yeah, it's a really mixed bag. I don't mean mixed bag as in it's muddled and doesn't work. It's a mixed bag in what he gives to us. It's a travel journal. He'll talk about people he meets on a bus or a rest stop. Sometimes it's the people high up on the mountains that he meets. He talks about architecture. He talks about some really, um, some real classics in terms of cold place travel writing from the 19th and early 20th century. He references a lot of other travel writing. I really, I really, really, for once in my life, I can't sum it up because it's so eclectic, so rangy in everything that's covered. But I'm loving it. I'm about halfway through. Oh, have I lost my bookmark? Oh, no, it's there. I'm about halfway through. It's gorgeous. I am completely lost in it. And I'm telling you now, the minute I turn the camera off, because the light's still good... I'm getting back to it. You don't have to, I, what, what I would say as a reader is you don't have to be into your mountaineering books or mountaineering a full stop. I think you would probably need to be into your kind of travel journal type book to enjoy it. I'm really struggling. I'm, I think that's what makes this really interesting is I'm struggling to put it into words what it's meaning for me to read it and, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's sort of everything. That's really not helpful, is it? Anyway, reading it. Now, on the subject of reading it, and once I've read it... <coughs> I've decided I am going to start getting rid of pretty much all my books. Generally, when I've read a book, I'll pass it on to a friend or the charity shops. <clears throat> Some of them I've, I've, I've put a couple in my own shop <clears throat> recently or in the last few months. Now, there's a lot here which need to go into... I mean, I'm going to... I really must get on with this. 
they are not for eBay, that kind of stuff. There's books here which are valuable, but it's not the kind of stuff to just sell through the normal channels. I need to set up a specialist selling site for that. I know how to do it, da, 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 I'll get on with it. But I've decided that apart from a very, very, very few little handful of books, my books need to start to go. Which, and I hope this is all right with all of you. Please tell me if you'd rather I didn't. But even books that some of you have gifted to me, I'm going to start releasing them. <laughs> They're going to go into the ether. So if it's a book that's been gifted to me and I put it in my shop, I'm going to keep the price low. I'm going to keep it just so that it covers literally my time to put it into the shop because it does take time. Uh, go to the post office, what have you. Uh, so yes, gradually over the next, I think it's probably going to take me about two years, I'm looking to get rid of all my babies. Well, nearly all. That will be liberating. You know, there's a few books I've read two or three times but I've got to the stage in life I'm so busy all the time I, I hardly get time to read the new books that almost this can you see this shelf this is all sort of natural history and outdoor living and that kind of natural yeah natural history outdoor living that can keep that will keep me going for two years probably this one shelf alone so i don't have time to re-read books and one of my great great joys in life my what it's one of my greatest joys in life after the garden is to read but then to pass those books on or at least to recommend them through through you know, my videos, and to hear of other people who have either bought my book or have read the book I've talked about and have loved it and been moved by it or whatever it is. I love that. Books are definitely for sharing. They are, it doesn't matter how dusty they are, it doesn't matter how old they are. This is one of my next ones to read. I'll show you this in a sec. Yeah, so it doesn't matter how old they are, how dusty they are, how, ooh, yeah, they're for sharing. They are for us to have personally and have our personal intimate moment with. But then that joy of talking to someone else about it and they say, oh yeah, I read that too, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. Or to pass a book on and then a few weeks later that person gets in touch to say, thank you so much for giving me that book. I loved it. So yeah, it's time to it's time to share this lot. And it's also time to start recouping some of the money I've spent. You know, over the years, I've never been one for spending particularly. You know, I don't do <laughs> évidemment. I don't do high fashion. I don't do handbags and shoes. I've never done a car. I don't have anything. You know, whatever. And I don't live in a trendy part of town. I've never done money on, you know, all that kind of glam, gorge, whatever stuff. But I've bought books. And I've sometimes bought books which have meant I can't do my food shop that week because I've bought a book. <laughs> Love it. So this, this one is called Two on a Trip by Lady Kitty Vincent. Lady Kitty Vincent. Oh, darling, is Lady Kitty Vincent coming for tea this afternoon? Oh, I do believe she is. Oh, the Lady Kitty Vincent. She's an absolute darling. Have you seen her pearls? Absolutely gorgeous. Now, that's what we think of Lady Kitty Vincent. <laughs> but this is what's actually going on. <laughs> so you can see why I bought this. How much did I pay? Oh, £12.50. 
20 odd years ago. So yeah, all the books are gradually going to go. I'm going to enjoy them. But once they're gone, they're gone. Mm. Now, talking of books, just quickly, I need to wrap up soon, don't I? Can you hear that rattle? I'm going to talk about rattle in a second. The gorgeous Tony. Thank you so much, darling. Who sent me some onion sets and some, some, some shallot sets. We're going into kind of sexy Sean Connery speech. My shallot sets. Send me the most magnificent and perfect poster. Now, I need to iron it, Tony. I need to iron it. What were you thinking? <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to... It's so big. I don't think I'm going to be able to show it to you at all. Okay, I have to read this through the screen backwards. If you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. Ain't that the truth? If you have a library in a garden, you have everything you need. I've got everything I need. Tony, it is so perfect. Obviously, when it arrived, <laughs> I bluffed because I'm an emotional wreck at the moment. But isn't that gorgeous? So I need to get it on my ironing board. And I think because it's massive, I can't afford a frame for it at the moment. I think what I'm going to try and do is, on the far wall of my shed, I'm going to try and, with blue tack, I'm going to try and put it up in my shed because it's gorgeous. I'll keep, it, it's kind of, um, it's very thick, but I'll keep an eye on it because I don't want it to get kind of mouldy, mildewy or whatever in the shed. But, I mean, it really, seriously, isn't that, isn't that everything? I know that there are a load of you out there You've commented over the years, and some of you are newer subscribers here, that there are so many of us who, deep down inside of us, our passions are the simplicity of growing and the beauty of reading. And on top of that, if we can do some sewing or knitting or painting, we're happy. We're simple souls, aren't we? Simple, happy souls. So also in the post this week, I had a really lovely card and I always have to be careful because I don't want to show people's addresses. Okay, so let's just say, <laughs> just looking, it's like, no, I can't show it without. Um, it's to say, Rosalyn, thank you for your card and your letter. Thank you. And then Renee, who you've heard me talking about before, I showed you her cards before. Renee makes all her own cards. And I loved this one. So, um, it's sort of, you know, a sympathy card, re Aunt teapot. But also, because I had my panic about my onion sets, I'm going to try and show you this. So, what she's done, this little card, it's been made with a load of little tuck flaps. So, if I pull this out, hang on, I'll show you in a sec. I'm going to tug this one out. And then, oh, here's another one. So, there's my card, gorgeous card. I'll show you that way. But what I love is it's all been made with all these folds and little little places to tuck. And inside all the tucks are I'm gonna unfold them, try to fold them to get them in there. A load of onion seeds. Thank you so much, Renny. I love the idea of this. Now I've never grown onion from seed. I've always been sort of too preoccupied by everything else to bother, just get me set. Pardon me, bung them in the soil. But because I have these now, I'm going to have a go. Oh, pardon me. I'm going to have a go. So, because I've never grown onions from seed before, I haven't got a clue what to do. So I need to do a little bit of, um, I need to have a little chat with my boyfriend, Mr. Google. So I think these will be for next year. 
I'll keep you posted. So yes, oh, what a, what a, what a, oh, crazy few days. Really busy, really bonkers, but really positive again. Really, really positive. Of course, I'm having little moments of, mm, that's okay, that's normal. But for the most part, I'm catching up on jobs. I'm getting things done that got left behind last month. Getting my sewings done. Even a few minutes to read a book. Loving the fact that a customer service um, thingy actually called me without prompting to say are you okay Miss Gregory yes I'm fine I'm a survivor or oh, go into that song and I'm really also glad I think it's been coming for a long time but I'm really glad that I've kind of made that decision once and for all that I'm going to start getting rid of my books mostly I will sell There'll be a handful that will go to charity, but mostly they're going to be sold. A lot of my books were bought as, well, the ones up there, they were bought as investments in the first place uh, to contribute to my pension fund. So, yeah, they're all going to start going. But, like I said, please, if you have gifted me a book and you don't want me to sell it, please tell me, because I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want to upset anyone's feelings. If that's the case, I'll either keep it or I'll pass it on to a friend. Um, so yeah, please let me know because I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to offend anyone. But otherwise, they can all start going. So they'll start going in my shop. Some of them anyway. Right, my lovelies. <sighs> I've got more to do this afternoon. Need to crack on. It's really good to catch up with you though. Um, I know that the gardening followers, those of you who tune in specifically for the garden, are going to be thinking, for goodness sakes, Vivi, get back to the garden. I will be, I promise, soon. I don't know quite when, soon. I'll let the frost nights pass and then we'll get, uh, we'll get grubby again. So until then, please, all of you, look after yourselves. Soak in the brightness. Let that brightness just make your soul feel optimistic again. That sun comes around every spring for a reason. It's telling us to be happy, be optimistic, get going again. I certainly will be. So until the next time, look after yourselves, please. Look after each other. I'll see you soon, but for now, Cheerio.